please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 chemistry questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Give the appropriate values for A to G in the following statements. Calculate the values to two significant figures for F and G. Use the following values if necessary. The square root of 2 is 1.4, the atomic weight of gold is 197, and the Avogadro constant is 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd per mole. Question 1. Ammonia reacts with oxygen to form nitric oxide and water. The chemical reaction equation is as follows. Question 2. A face-centered cubic structure contains d atoms in its unit cell. In the structure, one atom is surrounded by e nearest neighboring atoms. Gold crystallizes in the face-centered cubic structure under ambient conditions. The edge length of the cubic unit cell of gold is 0 0.41 nanometers. The atomic radius of gold atom is f nanometers and the density of crystalline gold is g grams per cubic centimeter. First is balancing of equations. So that's the first problem. And this is not very hard because we just need to remember that on the left side of the equation, there must be the same number of elements as there are on the right side. So if you have five nitrogens on the left side, you must have five nitrogens on the right side. And we manipulate the coefficient to match to make sure these numbers match. Then for the FCC structure, face centered cubic, what that means is that we have, if we take a cube and we put at the center of the face of that cube one half of this atom, we can obtain this unit cell. And if we put that here in the lattice, that looks like this. And what this means is that if you have a lot of these cubes where the center of a face is this atom, one half of an atom, and on the sides you have one eighth of an atom, if you put them all together, you can actually build this crystal lattice. Now, we want to know how many of these atoms are inside one cubic cell. So, if we think about the atoms in fractions, so for example, on this face, there's one half of an atom. You can see that from this top face. One half of that is inside the cubic cell, the unit cell. And the other half is on the other unit cell on top of it. The same is true with this face. So there are one half of an atom times how many faces in a, cu in a unit cube, in a unit cell. There are six faces, one, two, three, four, one on the top and one at the bottom. So there are six times one half of an atom. So we get three atoms on the faces. And now on the corners, there's one eighth and there are eight corners in a cube. So one eighth times eight is one atom. So one atom all in total at the corners plus three atoms in total on the faces equals four atoms per unit cell. And now we also need to compute the number of nearest neighbors. The number of ne nearest neighbors is the number of atoms that touch, touch the center atom on the face. So this atom here, half of this is invisible. Or maybe we should consider this top atom. Half of the top atom is actually on another unit cell on top of it in here. So we're only looking at this unit cell, but actually there's still another unit cell on top of it if it's a crystal. or or if you're looking at the bottom, there's another unit cell here at the bottom. And so we can think of the atoms touching this center atom. The atoms that are touching it, that are touching it are these at the corners. One, two, three, four. We already have four on the corners. And also these on the faces. So this atom actually touches this atom as well. And that's true. That's also true with this atom. This touches this 
also at the back and also on this other side and therefore on this in this unit unit cell there are four other atoms touching this central atom but the other half of this is on another unit cell above it on top of it and again in that other half four other atoms on the sides of that unit cell are touching that other half and therefore there are four here there are four here and four on the sides and that's why we get 12 nearest neighbors lastly we're interested in the relationship between the radius of each atom and the length of the side of a unit cell if you look at this because all of these are touching each other and this is the center of that of this atom here and this is the center of that atom here so from here to here that's actually radius r then you have 2r you have another r here so r plus 2r plus r is 4r so this length here is 4r and the side length if the side length is d then we can use the pythagorean theorem to write this so 4r squared equals d squared so that's the length of the edge plus d squared on this side and if we solve for r we we see that r is actually d over 2 square root of 2 so d here is again the edge of this atom now let's balance this equation first we look at the nitrogen atoms so you have four nitrogen atoms here so you must have four nitrogen atoms here as well and this is the only compound this is the only product with a nitrogen and so we put the four here now we look at the h atoms there are th three times four so four times three is 12 so there are 12 hydrogen atoms here so there must also be 12 on this side of the equation now this is the only product that contains hydrogen and there are already two in one of the products so what should we put here to have 12 so that we can have it equal to the number of h's here so of course we need to put 6 because 6 times 2 is 12 3 times 4 is 12 and that will make the number of h's equal and so i put 6 there now we only have this blank left and that is for the number of oxygen atoms so here we have 4 oxygen here we have 6 oxygen atoms so that's 10 in total so there must also be 10 on this side but we already have 2 on each unit so we need five here for this next problem it asks for the number of atoms in a unit cell we already discussed this and this should be four and it also asks for the number of nearest neighboring atoms again we already discussed this and this should be 12. gold crystallizes in the face center cubic structure and now we want to know the radius of gold if the edge of gold is actually the edge length of gold is 0.41 nanometers and we have the formula for this and that is that it is the edge length over 2 square root of 2 so the edge length is just 0.41 and we have 2 there and square root of 2 is given to be 1.4 so if i do this if, if we do this calculation here to two significant figures what I do first is I multiply that I'm I divide the 0.41 by 2 there I obtain 0 0.205 and to two significant figures that's 0.21 then square root of 2 is 1.4 and so I put 1.4 there and we notice that the top the top figure is divisible by 7 and also the bottom figure is divisible by 7 so if we divide by 7 the top figure that's 0 0.030 and the bottom figure is 0.2 which is now easy because 3 over 2 is 1.5 and we just need to move one decimal place to the left because here we, we have one more that is not accounted for so we write 1.5 now in the answer key it says 1.4 i have no idea why that's 1.4 but if you if you know how to do that please comment down below and i'll try your solution next is the density of crystalline gold we recall that density is just the mass over the volume 
So we will try to find a relationship between the mass and the volume of the gold in a crystal. And the best way to do that is actually in the unit cell. So we start with something that's given, the mass. And the atomic weight is actually given. And so we can actually start with the atomic weight. So this is the entire calculation that we'd have to do. So the atomic weight is 197 grams of gold, and that is per mole of gold. So that's what atomic weight means. That's the number of grams of the element per mole of that element. And then the goal is to cancel the denominator. So we have mole gold here. And we also know that one mole of gold is actually equal to 6.0 times 10 to the 23 atoms of gold. So in one mole, there are the, this much atoms of gold. And that's from this given here, Avogadro constant. And then we also know that four atoms of gold are in every cell of the AU crystal. And that's from from letter D here because it's FCC and so we, we write that and now we can cancel the atoms of gold there and we now have one AU crystal now for each AU crystal for each gold crystal we know that the side is 0.41 nanometers and therefore the volume of that is actually 0.41 times 10 to the minus 7 so the times 10 to the minus 7 is to convert this from nanometers to centimeters and if we put that there we have a centimeter cubed on the on the denominator and now we can cancel this cancel this and we're actually left with this simpler expression we notice that 187 is retained 0.41 is cubed here 4 is retained from here 6 is retained from here now you have 10 to the 23rd here but here you have 10 to the minus 21 so you're left with 10 squared in the denominator. And if you compute this, you will get this value. And here I'm also going to show how I actually computed this because in the exam, we are not given calculators. So we'll have to learn some tricks to compute by hand. First is instead of 197, I chose to, to use two significant figures because anyway, we'll have to give it into significant figures. So 197 becomes 200 for me. Next is I deal with 0.41 cubed. First, I do 0.41 times 0.41, and I get 0.1681. Then again, I round this to two significant figures to become 0.17. And the way I computed 0.1681 is actually first ignore the decimal places so i just have 41 times 41 and i know that 41 is 40 plus 1 so when i square that that's the sum of squares or rather that's the square of a sum that's a binomial square complete square and that's just the square of this which is 1600 plus the square of this which is 1 so 1601 plus twice the product of this and this so twice the product is 80 so 1600 plus 80 plus 1. So that's how I got 1681. And now there were four decimal places that we ignored. So we move it there. And now I got this quite easily. Then we needed a cube. So we need to multiply 0.41 by 0.17 just one more time. And this time I don't have any fancy tricks. It just did the usual multiplication to get 0 0.0697. Again, to two significant figures, that's 0 0.070 and now i think we have prettier numbers we get 200 here we get 7 in the denominator and the 7 that's from 0 0.07 times 10 squared so you just get 7 0 0.07 times 100 is just 7 and then i cancelled the 4 and the 6 i cancelled 2 so i have 2 here i have 3.0 in here now the numerators multiply to 400, the denominators to 21, and if you do the calculation, this is not a very hard calculation anymore, you get 19, and that's what we write in the answer sheet. If you learned something new today, 
please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!